Another fifth? <laughs> Look at Marcus. <laughs> Marcus, is your mom helping you get on Zoom? <laughs> What's going on everyone and welcome to Roll Call powered by Bud Light. Now Bud Light is all about celebrations and today we're celebrating a reunion with members of the Chargers offensive line who helped clear the way for LaDainian Tomlinson. So from left to right, Marcus McNeil, Chris Dealman, Nick Hardwick, Jeremy Clary. Guys, the band is pretty much back together here. How's it going? Thanks for doing this. Oh, thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's been too long, dudes. It's been way too long. This is my first. This is my first Zoom call, not with my kids. Ever? So they've never, I've never <laughs> done a Zoom kids. call ever. All right. Well, we're going to kick things off with a quote from Chris Dealman. You've always had a way with words, but about the offensive line, you said, and I quote, "We were just a bunch of mean mother." So I know we can't talk about this group without talking about Mike Goff and Shane Olivier, who are not with us right now on this call, but. Dealman, you can kickstart it. What made these Chargers offensive lines from the mid 2000s to late 2000s just so good? Well, I think it started with the fact that we stayed together for so long. So Marcus and me and Nick and Clary and Golf and Olivier, when he was in there, we were together for so long. We knew what each other was thinking. We knew each other's attitudes. We knew what we all were good at and we bonded in together and we, we were in me mother and it was fun beating the shit out of people and we did it a lot <laughs> i think to chris's point about knowing one another so well he would get mad at us if we come up to the line and make any calls so it was like i would come up and i would it was my job to give a number and give assignments out and he'd be like hit me and he'd be like hey knock that off i don't need it i know the call i know what we're doing here he's like all right man yes sir and i mean when we talk about mean mother where he's talking about himself and he brought that attitude yes. to the room and I think 100 percent everybody, everybody on our line felt safer when he was right next to us it was like we can do anything we want as long as Chris is in here because he's going to clean up the mess for us guaranteed guaranteed it, it rubbed off Mac and Nick were good at talking smack they had a good game good they, they could talk good good things <laughs> <laughs> As Clary will attest with me, I didn't say much. I just would grunt, get mad, and just, just you know, yeah. it rubbed off. i take it that way. We know offensive lines are notoriously the tightest unit on a football team, but, but was it the mixture of personalities? What made you guys just so tight? Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think when you've got a really good group, it's like you've got this perfect blend of personalities. So, You've got positive. You've got a guy who's willing to hold everybody accountable. You got somebody like Jeremy who comes in and he's super competitive and he wants to compete with you on who's going to be the earliest into the weight room, who's going to be the earliest in the meeting room, who studies the most. And you got Mac who just lightens the mood and has a ton of fun and goes out and competes. And him and Deal were just gelling together. And then you've got a coaching staff like our coaches when we were really cranking just knew us and we were so in sync. And I think when you put that kind of chemistry together, you just can walk out onto that line. And I look back at some of the pictures we have and we're like, when you walk up to the line, you just got this kind of strut about you and you're like, here we come boys. And they look at you and they feel that confidence the defensive line does. So we talk about personalities. You got the tough guy in Dealman, you got the competitive guy in Clary. Marcus, you're a prankster. Nick, you're a prankster. Okay, the little story, and Nick, you can take it from here. Uh, I heard that there's a story that you were naked in the trophy case of the lobby at the facility. <laughs> is yeah, this, so is they this were, true? Yeah, so they were remodeling the lobby at the front. It was the old AFC championship trophy from that 1995 year when the Chargers went to the Super Bowl. And so they were getting rid of like a four foot tall trophy case. It was probably three by three with a glass top on it. And I'm coming into the building. It's super early on a Friday. And Greg Minuski, the linebackers coach at the time, who's still probably circulating around the NFL at one point, he goes, man, you know what I would do if I were you? I'd get butt naked and sit in that thing and wait for everybody to come to work. And I was like, how am I going to get in there? And he's like, I'll help. And he grabs the lid off of the thing and he sets it down on the ground. And I take my clothes off 
And I just crawl up in there and started sitting crisscross applesauce and put my hands there. And then I just closed my eyes. And as everybody walked by, they started snapping pictures and Mineski sitting inside, just kind of hanging out. And so really all the credit goes to Greg Mineski. I just had the, uh, the balls to do it. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> all, all over the trophy stand. Yeah. <laughs> What's, what's sort of your favorite fun memory in terms of off the field? Like the stuff that we don't know, like what, what's, what stands out to you? The, I miss the game. I mean, I do miss the games and I miss the meetings, but you know what I'm starting to miss more than anything is our Friday night meals in the other city. Like when we have land and we call it, make reservations and we get a huge table for 12 and we could all just go sit, have steak. And it was like an absolute smorgasbord. Well, then fucking stop starving yourself and eat a Duh. steak, dude. Yeah, yeah, start eating again. <laughs> that so life's still is, around. This is literally the perfect segue because we're going to talk food. And Nick, I know we'll get to your weight loss in a second, Marcus. I don't you, like any of Nick's food. <laughs> you've not, you've lost some. <laughs> How much food... <laughs> When you talk about offensive linemen, I know it sounds stereotypical to talk food, but how much were you guys consuming back in the day when you were playing pregame, you know, like those steak dinners on Friday nights? It was disgusting. <laughs> I mean, it's, okay. it's, I tell everybody, I, I used to eat like an asshole, like hungry, not hungry. Just doing food. it. Food. Let's do it. Let's go. Keep it going. When we were all there together, it was Popeye's chicken on Friday that the rookies would go out. And hey, and how about, how about what you guys used to do is take that, the fried chicken skin off, put it down into the mashed potatoes or the macaroni and cheese, and you had like these little nuggets in the middle of your mac and cheese. Wow. <laughs> we have like 200 pieces of chicken circulating around the, around the locker room. And that's when I found out that it's just not black people that like chicken. Like oh. everybody. <laughs> Every race loves fried chicken. It doesn't matter who you are. <laughs> okay, so let's get to December 10th, 2006. All right, the champ at full throttle. Stirred to a frenzy. They want the record. Tomlinson off the left side. Tomlinson sidesteps. Hello, history books. What do you guys remember about that game, about that day, and just the memories of it being one of the pinnacle moments in Chargers football history? Tell me if I'm wrong, because I've heard multiple stories, but the way I remember it was we scored, we tied the record, then we got the ball and we came back down and we were doing it. And then in the huddle, LT's like, all right, I'm going to do it right here. Like, we're going to break this record. And I remember having tears in my eyes and I kept thinking to myself, don't f this snap up. But LT's like, hey, when I break this record, everybody's going to run to me in the court of the end zone yeah. and lift me up. Is that what, ha that's how I remember it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we, I think we gained, we definitely game planned it before he scored a touchdown, but I just don't think it was like, you know, I think we were more worried about the game plan than actually breaking the record. You know what I'm saying? Like we were yes. locked in. He breaks the record. You do lift him up, as, as it sounds like, Nick. He, he had originally wanted Dealman. You had said, he's a king. That's what a king gets. From your point of view, from you guys of doing the kind of grunt work to make that happen, just what did it feel like? And, and what was that moment like, Dealman? Well, having LT as your running back definitely makes your job a lot easier. So that helped out a lot. That moment, that was all the hard work that all of us had put in there. And granted, LT was a, he's a fucking Hall of Famer. He's, he was a beast. But man, the five of us threw in, and, L, and Lorenzo, because he was just another like pulling guard when he's on his feet. But it, it was all of us fighting together. We've been battling. And that, that, that is an honor for LT. Obviously, he'll get all the recognition. But man, the five of us that we all, we all, we all con contributed to that because of all hard work. And we had some good coaches back then. And just through all that and battling, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're old linemen. You're supposed to do it. You're supposed to make a big asshole, and thank God we had LT, and he got through it a lot. When, you know, you mentioned all the great times that you had together, what did playing with these guys mean to all of you? 
uh, the environment was just like something you could like, I mean, for me coming off the practice squad, it was just an environment for someone like to thrive in, you know, to, you know, have a guy like Chris to raise up to his level of toughness, to have a guy like Nick, um, you know, to raise up to his level of intelligence and to have, you know, Marcus to raise up to his like level of athleticism. And, you know, like, you know, when I first got there with golf to have a veteran next to me to, you know, help me along the way, it just, it was, I tell everybody all the time, it's all about timing. You know, it's, um, I definitely worked hard and I tried really hard, but it was timing. I was in a, this little perfect environment for me just to blossom in. And, um, I mean, I love, I love you guys. I miss you guys a bunch and wish we could be around each other a lot more than we are. Like Jeremy said, timing's everything. We got so lucky, I think, to come into a team together, really. We're all the same age. We all started having kids and getting married and grow. We grew up together. Everybody came into this thing together and we grew up together. So we're talking 80 plus percent of the guys on that team were the exact same age, going through the exact same phase of life. And it just made us so strong together. And then we had some select veterans at key positions who could help steer these, this young wild kind of energy that we had. It was so perfect. And it was like, like Jeremy said earlier, it was the time of my life. I mean, I think everyone would agree. It was the time of all of our lives. It was just an absolute blessing. It was a blast. Well, we talk about timing. I've had such a great time with you guys today. This has been such an honor. Thank you for letting me be part of it. Here's some of those stories. I've so appreciated it. And it's been so great to get you guys back together. So thank you so much for doing this. Of course. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. It was fun.